Japanese soldiers fighting on after World War II. In 1945, the Second World War was finally drawing to a close. Hitler's last stand had taken place in his bunker on April 30th, when he and his wife Eva Braun had committed suicide after it became apparent that there was no way out, and the German Third Reich formally surrendered on May 7, 1945. Hiroshima and Nagasaki had each an atomic bomb dropped on them, forcing the formal Japanese surrender on August 15th, announced by Emperor Hirohito, and two weeks later on September 2nd, the war was officially over. Despite hostilities finally coming to an end, it seems that not everyone got the message. Some Japanese soldiers held out into the 1950s, 60s, and 70s for a mixture of reasons. Some had been sent to remote Pacific Islands, and communication had simply been lost with the outside world, and so they missed the broadcasts that the war had ended. Others doubted the legitimacy of Japan's surrender, and others still just simply refused to believe it was all over. Japanese soldiers were trained in using the Bushido Code fighting ethic. They were taught that every fight was to the death and that it was an honor to die for the emperor, but to surrender was both shameful and dishonorable. Because of this belief, they could not accept that their leaders would have given in and surrendered. That's why only a small percentage of Japanese soldiers surrendered during the war whilst the majority were either captured, wounded, or killed. And why, decades later, there were still some Japanese holdouts fighting a war that no longer existed. Two of the first holdouts discovered in the 1950s were Private First Class Yuichi Akatsu and Corporal Shoichi Shimada who had remained on Lubang Island in the Philippines, with a group led by 2nd Lieutenant Hiro Onoda, with orders to slow down the enemy forces by any means possible. By the time the Allies took the island on February 28, 1945, only Onoda and three other men remained alive, and so they retreated, hiding deep in the jungle and waging guerrilla tactics on the locals for supplies. After the end of the war and over the next five years, the Allies repeatedly dropped pamphlets in the jungle for the holdouts to find, detailing the end of the war. The men examined the pamphlets and deemed them fake. But in 1949, Yuichi Akatsu walked away from the other three men. He continued to live alone for another six months before surrendering to the village of Lok in March 1950. Two years later, in 1952, the Allies dropped another series of letters and family photos across the jungle. But the three remaining men ignored them, still convinced it was a trick. A year later, Private Shimada was shot in the leg during a guerrilla raid. Despite Onoda successfully nursing him back to health, Shimada died in 1954, this time shot by a search party that had gone into the jungle looking for the three men. The other two soldiers continued to hide out in the jungle until the 1970s. But there were more holdouts elsewhere. In June 1944, over a year before the war ended, three Japanese transport ships were bombed by the Americans. About 30 survivors of the wreckage managed to swim to safety to the nearby island of Anatahan, which was part of the Mariana chain of islands off the coast of the Philippines. Later in 1944, the U.S. successfully invaded the Mariana Islands, ignoring the smaller parts of the archipelago like Anatahan, seizing the main islands in the chain. They had no idea of the Japanese residing there until the natives on nearby islands informed them. Anatahan was a small volcanic island and had very few native residents. The 30 Japanese who reached it struggled to survive, eating a diet of coconuts, insects, bats, and lizards to get by. Their conditions improved slightly after an American B-29 Super Fortress bomber experienced difficulty and crashed on the island, providing the castaways with vital resources and tools so that they were able to build shelters. After Japan had surrendered, the Americans attempted to evacuate Mariana, taking 45 residents and two Japanese from Anatahan. But the 30 shipwreck victims refused to believe the war was over, fleeing further inland where they continued to live for another six years as holdouts. Among the Japanese already living and working on the island were a married couple, Shoichi and Kazuko Higa. Shoichi had left the island before all this happened to visit his sick sister on another island, but was unable to return. With one woman and 30 men on an island, you can probably imagine the kind of tension that arose. Kazuko pretended to be married to another Japanese plantation worker with the same surname of Higa for her own protection. But her new husband didn't last too long after he mysteriously drowned, and then the men turned on each other for a chance for her affections. 
Over the next six years, they foraged and fought for survival and spent a lot of their time drunk, having discovered a way to ferment a drink known as tuba or coconut wine, leading to violent fights and jealous rivalries that resulted in 12 of the original 30 dying on the island. As the only woman, Higa had to be smart to protect herself against the drunk and aggressive men she found herself stranded with. So she often stuck close to four of the men in particular, sparking jealousy in the rest as she hid behind them to fend off unwanted advances. Finally, in 1950, Higa saw a U.S. vessel off the coast and raced to flag it down, asking to be taken off the island, therefore ending her nightmare as a holdout. Through her, the U.S. and Japanese authorities learnt of the forgotten men on the island, who still did not believe that Japan had surrendered. The authorities asked their families to write letters as proof that the war was truly over. They were dropped on Anatahan in 1951, along with an official message from the governor of Kanagawa Prefecture. The holdouts were finally convinced. Waving white flags on the beach in surrender, they waited for U.S. officials to collect them from the island and send them back home. Their story became a huge sensation in Japan, and Kasugo Higa became an actress but was forever painted as the temptress seductress of Anatahan Island and was eventually forced to go into hiding. Meanwhile, on another Mariana Island, Tinian, another Japanese holdout remained, Murata Susumu. In 1944, one of the larger Pacific Island battles of World War II took place, the Battle of Tinian. The fighting went on for nine days before the U.S. ultimately declared victory and a few hundred remained Japanese soldiers fled deep into Tinian's jungles to avoid capture and surrender. These soldiers were slowly weeded out over the coming months, with the final garrison surrendering on August 4, 1945, after the war was over. But one man remained, Murata Susumu. He had set up a shack on Tinian's coast and continued to live in isolation there for the next eight years, before he was finally captured in 1953. Two years later, another Japanese holdout was discovered on the Philippines' largest island, Luzon. Seaman Noboru Kinoshita was one of many forgotten Japanese servicemen hiding themselves away in the island's jungles. He had fled there in 1944, after surviving the sinking of a troop ship, and then spent the next 11 years living off lizards, frogs, fruits, and wild monkeys in the jungle, unaware that the war was over. He was finally discovered in November 1955 when he was picked up by Philippines police during his raid on a jungle-side sweet potato patch, and he expected to be executed for theft. Upon finding out his enemy planned to send him back to Japan a free man instead, he hanged himself rather than face the shame of returning home. That same year, in 1955 in Dutch New Guinea, four Japanese airmen surrendered, a whole decade after the end of the war. The Japanese had invaded Dutch New Guinea in 1942, afterwards leaving behind troops to maintain control of the island. The four airmen were part of a larger battalion who marched from Wewak to Hollandia in 1944. 89 men set out on the forced march, but 30 of them drowned trying to cross a storm-swollen river, and others died from hunger and disease. When the remaining men discovered the Allies had taken Hollandia, they decided to hide in the jungle until Japanese forces recaptured the land. Later, they were discovered and attacked. Five fled deeper into the jungle, crossing the border into Dutch New Guinea and becoming self-sufficient off the land there. Due to their poor diets and lack of resources, one of the five died of malaria in 1947. The other four continued to live on in the jungle for another eight years before being discovered by a villager from a nearby settlement. Despite learning that the war was over and that the U.S. and Japan were now friends, the airmen refused to believe it, but stayed in touch with the villagers nonetheless. It was three years later that the locals and police finally convinced the airmen that the war was over, and they at long last surrendered themselves. In 1956, 13 more Japanese soldiers were discovered on the islands of Morotai and Mindoro. Both islands had experienced Pacific battles during the war and many Japanese had fled into the jungles to hide. The Allies had no interest in wasting resources on these stragglers, and so some lived there for years after the war, unseen and forgotten about. On Morotai, nine soldiers were found in 1956, and on Mindoro, four men surrendered in November of the same year. The Morotai and Mindoro holdouts marked the end of those discovered in the 1950s, but over subsequent decades, many more Japanese were discovered, with the final two holdouts surrendering in 1974, almost 30 years after the end of the war.